Hey guys, Rachel here with the Cackling Moon. This is week two discussion um, of the Tarot Book Club. We are reading 78 Degrees of Wisdom and I have lots of thoughts and lots of things to, to discuss and talk about. Um, crazy hair day. <laughs> it's an all natural day for my hair um, because tomorrow, um, tomorrow I'm going to be getting glammed up for myself. Well, as glammed up as I can do it um, for a Christmas party. So I figured today will just be all natural. Um, okay, so for week two, we read through chapter, um, we, so we're, we're still in part one. So we're part one, but chapter four, I believe. Um, and so let me just, jump right over to that section. There was quite a bit of reading in this chapter. Um, and I think we went through five cards. Yeah, so the worldly sequence, chapter four. Um, I have some notes, some little things, um, but I basically just kind of want to go through card by card and just kind of like give you guys my thoughts on it. So if you're following along with the book club, um, you know, you can utilize this video as part of like a discussion or you can use the comment section below in this video to voice your commentary on um, your feelings and thoughts on the cards that I talked about, whether you're reading the book or not, it's up to you. So <laughs> I just thought I would just put this out here because um, why not? Why shouldn't we have a discussion, right? So. Um, in, in chapter four, the first card that we were reading about is the Empress, number three, the Empress. Um, and I was pleasantly, pleasantly pleased to see that the Empress was being, she, she's, she's being described more than just pregnant. <laughs> um, one of, one of my biggest pet peeves with the Empress, and I am guilty of doing this as well when I'm doing readings, but one of the, one of my biggest pet peeves with the Empress card is that, um, a lot of the imagery of her in various tarot decks, she's, she's portrayed as pregnant, um, which is fine because part of her, part of the meanings of her is creation, mother earth, um, but creation, like creation is a big one. And, um, and she's all about fertility and abundance and whatnot. And so pregnancy is part of that. And, and I feel like a lot of, um, a lot of other tarot books that I've read, they emphasize a lot on the pregnancy part and it's kind of like, but there's more to her than just that. Um, and so I really, really enjoyed the bit about the Empress in this book. Um, something that I, some, so some notes that I put down, um, substituting religion to replace the reality of the flesh, escapism equals pleasure, e escapism, pleasure equals evil. So when, when we talk about, when we get into the Empress energy, um, you're really starting to kind of see some of the Christianity or like the dogmatic kind of points of views being brought into the tarot. Um, and I really like that that started to come in because you kind of see um, a different perspective of the cards and you see how tarot is so, is, is such a different, it's different compared to religion and it's different compared to a traditional belief system. Um, and so I liked that the Empress is portrayed as like the universe, mother of everything, right? She's also portrayed side by side to Mama Mary um, or the Virgin Mary, um, which it plays a really important role. The Virgin Mary plays a very important role in um, in the whole story of Jesus and, and, and all of that. But she's often, again, in Christian, like more of the Protestant Christian um, beliefs is Mama Mary is very much dismissed. She's very much pushed to the, <laughs> pushed to the background. Whereas in more of like the Catholic, um, the Catholic point of view with, with, with religion, Mama Mary is a very prominent figure. So um, I like that in the tarot, the Empress has a name, that she has a place in, in the tarot and her being feminine, her being female, her being, um, you know, looked at not as evil or not as the, the reason for the falling and the corruption of humankind. Like she's looked at as, 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 as like a goddess or she's looked at as 
the creation of everything. So from that sense, seeing Empress as pregnant and whatnot, I can understand that from that point of view because she is the creation of everything. She's Mother Nature. She's Mother Earth. She's Gaia. She is um, like the universe. Like she's she's the the birther the birther. <laughs> Does that make sense? She's she she creates everything, right? Um, and and so I like that. She's also number three, and so in the book it goes into the Trinity and all of that that kind of aspect. So I really love that the this book brings in different elements of kind of um, putting it together. So it, I really, really encourage you guys, if you haven't read this book, to read it because I can only go so far into it um, before I start like not making sense even to myself because like literally you have to just, you have to read it. There's so much information. Um, so one of the notes that I put for um, substituting religion to replace the reality slash flesh um, that in this book, it starts to talk about how, you know, the Empress is, 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 she's also sexual. She's a, a you know, the sexuality, she has the Venus symbol, so she's feminine. But in religion, Eve is looked at as a bad person for tempting and having taken a bite out of the apple after she was, they were told not to, you know, she's looked at as a bad person, like she is the reason for the corruption and she is the reason for the falling of humankind. And so um, it kind of like, that's why like, like religion puts a bad taste on women. And so I feel like with the Empress um, in the tarot, she symbolizes like, you, you make a choice. Um, some people don't want to be tested or tempted with the flesh or tempted with sex or tempted with women or tempted with not just women, but I'm just saying that in general, um, tempted with temptation. You know what I mean? And so they turn to a dogmatic belief system, religion, which has rules and guidelines and, and things that you should and should not do um, to keep themselves in check. And I really like that it, the book started to dive into that with the Empress because I feel like she's all about, she shouldn't be looked at as tempting or she shouldn't be looked at as that. She is the embodiment of embracing pleasure, um, giving yourself pleasure, um, loving yourself so much, you know, that you give yourself what you desire and that there's no nothing wrong with desiring things, whether it's the flesh stuff, your body, um, or if it is, you know, foods, or if it's um, desiring beauty in the world or desiring to create something or desiring to start your own whatever. So that's the, the, the Empress is like the birth point of your desire to create. And it doesn't just have to be, and it should not just be limited to the desire to create another being. It's also the desire to create your own business or your own um, your own art or your own music or your own, you know what I mean? Like you get the point. So it's, it's not just making babies <laughs> because that's like, if that's one thing that I can't stand is, is that when women are looked at as we're just baby makers and there's so much more to us than that. Um, so I really, really appreciated that. Um, and then let's see. I, I highlighted the body and the natural world are realities that must be integrated rather than denied. So like I said, she's symbolizing the pleasures, the, the temptation. She's symbolizing um, the beautiful things, the, the, the everything delicious and, and beautiful that you want to experience in life. But religion creates that as that's that's evil or it's bad or it's like you shouldn't be you know tempted to, for that you shouldn't be craving those things um you have to be stuck in a reality you have to be stuck in like this this guideline stay in your lane type of things and so the empress is like no you're, you're supposed to be more free more able to do with your body and with your with your desires with what you want you know if you create something and you you have the desire to create something and you have a desire to express yourself in a certain way whether it's the way you dress or the way you speak or the way you wear your hair or the way that you um create your art like you should be able to do that without having limitations and stuff so i really 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 love that about the empress i could go on and on about her i wrote so many notes um let's see so also um 
I put number three. So the, the okay, the child is born pure, willing to experience life for reality. So children, babies that are born, they're born pure, and they have that that desire to to um what did I put to experience life. And then as you get older you make that choice. It's like you're in a crossroads and you make that choice or your parents make that choice for you. No, you will be in this religion. No, you will believe this, you know, or it's like if you are more of a free spirit, spirit or a free thinker, you create your own path as you move along and as you, as you go through life and you learn to embrace reality for yourself and not the reality of someone else telling you this is the way you're supposed to believe so i completely resonated with that because when you are somebody who has worked so hard to get outside of a certain belief or a certain way of thinking it's really hard to get out of that but when you've worked so hard to get out of it it's like you don't want to go back <laughs> Um, and then I really liked for the Empress, the reversal. So I do sometimes read reversals and I really like that sometimes the book puts some reversals. So I always highlight it in a different color and I put the Empress can mean a stubborn, emotional approach, a refusal to consider facts, self-indulgent pleasure when restraint is needed. So like the Empress typically means to give yourself the things that you desire, right? To an extent, though, there always has to be a limitation. There always has to be that let that boundary point where you're giving yourself too much when it's not good for you. So overindulging in alcohol, for example, substance abuse, um, where it turns into a negative habit that is harming yourself or harming other people. So like I said, it's fine to have that glass of wine, but if you are abusing that glass of wine and you're doing it over and over again to mask emotions, to mask um, experiences, to to take yourself out of reality, um, that's where it becomes a reversal, okay? So that's where pleasure, like gi giving into the pleasures of the world or the flesh is a negative. And so that's I think that that's what religion is trying to do is to prevent that from happening. But at the same time, when you become so involved in a religious mindset it's like you feel guilty for even having pleasure to begin with you know what i mean so i liked that i like that because i it's it's true it's like even having food like having an being an emotional eater i am an i am an emotional eater so i could see the the high, the, the high priestess the empress in reverse for myself where it comes to a point where it's like i love to eat whatever i if i want to eat this i'm going to eat it but there's a point where am i substituting that food for something I'm lacking or for a void in my emotions or in my heart or some, whatever. So it's really, I really enjoyed that. So I had to highlight that and mention that. <laughs> um, let's see. Also, okay, so we all, I also highlighted retreat from feeling rejecting your emotions or attempting to suppress your desires. To, like, so to, to suppress your desires, sexual desires. And I felt that hard for, um, especially for people who are, who struggle with their sexuality, people who feel like they can't be open about their sexuality because of other people, the judgment of others, or the way that they were raised or whatnot. And so that that hit me hard. That that is an empress in reverse to me is is definitely like your inability to express your sexual um your natural sexual instincts based on someone else or the rules of that someone else places before you. Okay, so I spent a lot of time on the Empress. Let's let's just jump. I'm telling you, I could go on forever. I have so many notes, but let's go on to the next one, which is the Emperor. So the Emperor, I had a really, really, really hard time with the Emperor, I will admit. <clears throat> um, I did a lot of highlighting for his chapter, but I had no side notes for him. <laughs> so I did a lot of the highlighting, but there was no side notes that I made for the Emperor. Um, I, I'll admit I have daddy issues. I have had issues with my father since I was a little girl. I am also a daddy's girl. So it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, like just me and my, me and my father are always, we're always like this growing up. Um, I was his scapegoat <laughs> for his bad habits, but at the same time, I also, I also, how do I say it? Like I also allowed him to 
continue his bad habits because I protected him or I kept his secrets for him or I helped him, you know, keep secrets for him from my mother or whatever. So there was just a lot of like weird little things like that. Um, that relationship, that bond between me and my father is, I feel like I have a strong bond with him, but it was so toxic at first in my life that um, now that he's a completely changed man <laughs> um, and, and our relationship is strong still, but it's just it's always been so toxic and so I feel like that's why um, and I love my father I'm not saying like I don't have any relationship with him or whatnot but I do I love my father very much and I look up to him very much um, but there's there's skeletons in the closet you know and we him and I have grown from that <laughs> we've evolved um, but I feel like that's why the Emperor was so challenging for me because of, of my past and my issues um, one of the big things about the emperor is he's all about authority. He's all about structure. He's all about rules and guidelines and, and all of the above. And those are the very things that I can't stand. I want authority in my own life. I want to be the authority figure in my life. I've always had the father figure in my life telling me what to do and how to be and where to and what to believe and all of that all the time, all my whole life growing up. Um, I've also had a very negative experience with my, my father figure growing up. And so I feel like that's why um, the elements of the emperor are so hard for me to unravel because it's like I've seen a toxic, like the, I've seen the toxic traits of authority as well as, you know, feeling secure by that same person. So it's weird. It's very weird. <laughs> I'm trying not to go too deep into my personal life because I don't really want to bring that to the table but um I'm hope I hope you guys can kind of understand um okay so what else did I highlight with him um okay so the book talked about how stability so stability can be a good and a bad thing stability meaning structure like so so you, to have structure in your life it's like usually you have routines right you have your responsibilities your chores the things that you need to do paying your bills on time going to work you know whatever like all of those those typical things but they also say that sometimes having too much structure in your life can be not as healthy because you are only living the straight and narrow right I'm only living the straight and narrow. I'm only staying in this lane. I'm not looking to see what else is out there. You're not you're not sightseeing. You are not window shopping. You're not enjoying the the <laughs> you're not enjoying life if you're just completely living a structured lifestyle um, and obeying the rules and whatnot. So that's kind of like that's kind of part of what the emperor was bringing to the table when I was reading it. That's how, at least that's how I was understanding it. Um, so I wrote stability allows spiritual development as well. So it's not always bad. Spil spiritual development through stability is is important. Um, I feel like for some people, if they feel like they could spiritually develop within the church, then they do so. Some people feel like they can spiritually develop on their own, which is what I did. Um, so I had a solo path, you know. Um, and to an extent, it's like structure, having a set schedule, having a routine kind of helps keep you in check, right? But when it starts to deter you from enjoying pleasures in life, that's where I feel it starts to get into the more toxic or the more emperor in reverse. Um, so some of the reversals is like bad rulerships. Um, stability becomes the enemy of morality so it's kind of like people who take advantage of their authority on other people okay uh, people who are trapped at the level of the emperor are often people who have never really accepted the ordinary humanity of their father i highlighted that because i felt like that was calling to me <laughs> um I feel like that's, it kind of just tells you that there's, it, like for me, that stuck out to me when I read that. And so I was like, nope, I got to highlight that. And I highlighted it in orange, meaning it was a reversal to me. Whether the book intended it to be a reversal or not, it felt like that to me. It felt like, I just feel like there's so much more, there's so much more work that I need to do with the Emperor card. Um, 
I feel like I got a taste of the emperor this year when my husband was gone and I was you know, literally living by myself for seven months <laughs> while he was off doing his thing. Um, and so, you know, I was, I took the role of like, I was paying all the bills. I was handling all the stuff at the home. I was, you know, um, you know, in charge here at the home. Like if I didn't do things like no one else was going to do it. So I had to step up in that sense. Um, and then also becoming more independent. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't easy going to sleep by myself at night knowing that my husband wasn't around if shit were to hit the fan you know what i mean so it was like a lot of authority i was i was learning to be independent um and in in a new sense in a new home that i hadn't even really lived in we hadn't lived in it for that very long when he left so um there was a lot of things that i was learning about myself and about being an authority figure and so i feel like there's more to that and I feel like 2020 is going to be my emperor time. Like I haven't added up what my year card is going to be, but I'm really interested to see how the emperor will play a role in that. Um, because I feel like there's so much more shadow work that I need to do with the emperor. So let's move on to the next one. <laughs> this one was the Hierophant literally was the card that I just was so excited to read about because this is the card that I have so had so much trouble with when I was learning the tarot I couldn't deal with this one um and so the hierophant um symbolizes dogma he symbolizes tradition old-fashioned values he he symbolizes structure as well he's very similar to the emperor which is why these two cards being side by side literally in the tarot when they're in order just gives me the heebie-jeebies <laughs> because if, if this doesn't scream my father I don't know what else does um so that's it was really interesting to read the, the perspectives of these two cards together it was a very hard chapter let's put it that way <laughs> um um let's see so okay so the hierophant is a companion to the emperor a wise father guiding his children together they share responsibility of for humanity the one providing physical needs the other guiding spiritual growth physical needs what do you need let me put them you know i'm working to put them food on the table so that you have a house to live under and food to eat to stay healthy that's the emperor energy a father right a father role although many mothers do that too um, and then you have the Hierophant who is in charge of your spiritual growth, whether it's dictated to you or, which is what I really loved about the Emperor, what, about the Hierophant is it talked about the structure of the do dogmatic point of view of the, of the Hierophant being looked at as the Pope or, um, as a pastor, you know, that how they are dictating to you what you should believe and then it gives you another perspective of a more open approach to your spirituality. So you, it's, it depends on how you were raised and how you view spirituality and your path. It will, that will dictate how you view the Hierophant. And this is really interesting because when I first learned tarot back in 2012, I saw this Hierophant literally as, that's my dad. That is somebody who is telling me you, you need to be born again Christian because you're going to go to hell if you're not. That, that's exactly how I viewed the Hierophant. Now, seven, seven years later, <laughs> seven years later, um, I'm seeing the Hierophant as my own personal approach to spirituality. Is it, is it, is the Hierophant has literally been various mentors in my path within the last seven years. The Hierophant has been, um, you know, one of the, She's been one of the store owners for a tarot shop that I used to read for. She was, you know, I really looked up to her. There was a lot of things that I learned from her. Um, the Hierophant resembles myself, you know, um, leading my own spiritual path, doing this solo. Like I have a very solo spiritual path right now. Um, the Hierophant can also resemble your spirit guides. The Hierophant can resemble past loved ones. I was, I just really liked to see the Hierophant in a different sense. Um because I had such a negative, such a negative feeling towards him. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. So I wrote here, do you see the Hierophant as being told what to believe or to seek personal guidance in your own way? But, so that was a big, that was a big one for me. I really liked that. Um, I wrote, 
Okay, so then there was a bit about the Hierophant where it said people who, who, you know, they were once raised in a dogmatic mindset, like a, a way of being, and then they walked away from it, but then they go back to it. So that was interesting because I wrote down um, turning away from dogma, yet going back equals the inability to seek personal responsibility. So we see that a lot. We see that a lot, especially in our tarot community. You see people who have left the church. They come and do tarot for a few years or so, and then they go back to the church. And it's kind of like when you look at it in that sense, they're seeking their spirituality that is right for them in their own path. But it's also we look at it as if you need to turn back to a, a, a structured, the rules, right? Like what we just talked about with the emperor. Um, a rules like you're, you're you're supposed to live your life this way and believe it this way those people need to be told what to do because they they can't take responsibility for their own actions for their own pleasures for their own interests and their own desires um and their inability to see that that the you know what i mean so it's like when you can take ownership of yourself and say this is what i desire these are my interests and stuff and this is how i want to live my life versus being told what to do there's a big difference between that so i that i felt that hard when i saw that because <clears throat> i st i feel like i've left the the dogmatic past but i feel like sometimes i'm in limbo and i'm only in limbo based on the people that i leave that i'm that i'm like associating with <laughs> And so if I'm spending too much time with my family, then I'm starting to feel limbo. <laughs> but um, but it, that was just interesting because to me, it's like, no, I want to take ownership of my own life. I don't need someone telling me what to do. Um, that was one of the reasons why I had such a hard time to begin with growing up as a young girl because I was always told what to do and it wasn't always necessarily what I wanted to do. So very interesting. <clears throat> okay. The Lovers. This was probably one of my favorites to read. So The Lovers is not just romance and soulmates and, and, and all of that. The Lovers is also about major choices. Major choices. Um, it's about you're coming up to a crossroads kind of a thing. Um, the Lovers is equality. It's balance between you and another person or your, or within yourself. <clears throat> um, one of the notes I put is um, a choice between life and values breaking away from the parents. So in 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 the the fool's journey, like when you're going through these these characters, literally when you're going through like mom and dad, right, your parents and stuff, and then you're going through like figuring out what you believe in or or testing the boundaries do I break rules and do what I want to do right and then when you get to the lovers this is like puberty <laughs> the lovers is like your puberty your puberty part or when you're starting to get familiar with your body or also it's, it's it could also be the level of um losing your virginity and meeting somebody or or falling in love or making that decision is like do I want to <clears throat> do I want to save myself for somebody or do I want to, you know, um, lose my virginity to somebody and you're developing and you're growing and, and oh my gosh, there's just so much, there's so much with this card. It was like blowing my mind. Um, and I, and one of the big choices with the lover's card is that person making the choice of, do I branch away from rules, dogma and mom and dad to go live with my lover, to move out, to get married, to do my own thing, to start branching out, you know, away from everything that I grew up and, 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 and all of that. So that's another element of the lovers that I really liked. Um, what else did I write? <clears throat> the choice of the outer and the inner path. The inner path equals your hidden desires, which is the, the, literally the hid, hidden desires, like the fleshy stuff that we talked about with the Empress. And um, are you labeled as evil for following your inner desires, right? Um, and I feel like that's kind of something that religion puts on us, is that if you follow your, your desires, your heart, your interests, your pleasures, you're evil, you're bad, you are, you are giving in to the flesh, right? You're not, you're not doing what, what you're supposed to do. 
um, really interesting. It was so, I, I mean, I wish I could like explain it better and I'm really bad at this, but I'm just putting my thoughts out there in video for you guys to just kind of like, kind of get a taste of it. But I'm telling you, like, you got to read this. Um, okay. So I highlighted this bit. Until the sexual urge rouses itself, most people are content to act out their parents' expectations for them. So, te like, literally, until you hit puberty, you're really, like, content with following the rules of your parents and what your parents tell you and what your parents tell you to believe and all of that. But when you, there's, like, a certain point in your life, in everyone's life, um, and it's different for everybody. Sometimes it's not puberty. Sometimes it's later for some people. Um, where you just start to, your mind starts to have like its own, it works on its own, right? Your mind starts to wander and you start to question things and you start to see things differently. And the lovers being the card of choice is about that. It's about, are you going to branch away from everything that you were grown up to believe or are you gonna follow that still? And it's a big, that's a big part in someone's life. That same thing with like, when you get the keys to your first car, you know, which is what we're gonna talk about next with the chariot. Um, or when you meet someone and you fall in love for the first time, you know, you're, you're starting to do things differently that you've never done before. You're experiencing things you've never experienced before. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the experiences that come with the lovers is, it, it, it's, it's stuff that will pull you away from the structure and the rules. So I, I love it. I love seeing how that like that kind of flows. <laughs> I like that. The Lovers was a big chapter. Um, okay, so this was also um, another one that, that I wrote down. Rejection of sexual desires. Follow where your desires lead you. So I wrote, I, I highlighted this. Those who cannot release their egos, even for an instant, misuse sex and are misused by it. Sex never satisfies. When a person rejects the body's desires to release itself with another person, the result is depression. The angel has been denied. Um, I really felt that hard because I feel like there's a lot of people um, who who can relate to that in different ways. One could be people who choose to save themselves for marriage or the other could be for people who are denied their sexuality. People who feel like they have to hide their sexuality because of their parents or because of their religion, right? So when you're not about like you're not obeying your your body, your flesh, the, the empress, your desire, for love because you're trying to abide by the rules of someone else it creates a reverse moment it creates chaos within you so it's really it was a powerful chapter I was feeling that really hard because it breaks my heart to think of people who can't love who can't love who they want to love because I can openly love who I want to love and I feel like that's a privilege and I feel like it's 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 one of the most amazing things and I'm very grateful for it. Um, but it broke my heart to think that what if I couldn't love him openly, right? Like I try to put myself in, in those people's shoes and I think what if I couldn't love him openly? How would that make me feel? How would, how, how would pulling the lover's card make me feel? And so as something like when I pull the lover's card for readings for myself and my husband, it's like I feel good. But for some people, pulling this card might be hurtful. Um, and so that made me think. It really did. Powerful stuff. Okay, last but not least is the chariot. <laughs> so the chariot is like you get the keys to your car. You get the driver's license. You finally pass the DMV test and you get your driver's license and you're able to go and, and, and go on adventures. Like that's the essence of the chariot. The chariot is taking action, taking initiative in your life, going for the things that you desire the most and doing it. That's the, that's the chariot. Um, I wrote to be strong willed and in control to mature and grow up, right? You are moving out of mom and dad's house. You made that decision. I'm going to move out with mom and dad and go live with my lover. Um, you get the keys to your car. I'm going to go do my own thing. I don't have to rely on anyone for rides anymore. Um, you get your job and you're making your own money. Like that's those, the, that's like what the chariot is all about. The chariot is all about passion and motivation to have, to be passionate and motivated in your life because of achieving things. And you, that's what the chariot does is he achieves things. <laughs> 
He's very victorious. The number seven I wrote. The number seven equals victory. Okay, it's success. Um... So the chariot shows us the developed ego. The adolescent period of searching and self-creation has been passed. Okay, so you kind of finally figured out who you are a little bit. Um, and now we see mature adults, successful in life, admired by others, confident and content with himself, able to control feelings, and above all, to direct the will. So you're at a level, a new level. It's like you've 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 lost your virginity. You are a man now. Like you know what I mean? Like that's 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 pretty much like what the chariot, the essence is. It's like you've achieved something in your life. You've done something different. You've finally like stepped outside of some boundaries and rules. And now I'm ready to live my life the way I want to live it. I love it. Um, also in readings, just just in general, not not necessarily with what the book was was um, teaching, but I see the chariot as a green light card. So there's a couple cards in the tarot that are green lights for me. And the chariot is one of those. The chariot to me tells me to move forward. And, and whenever I pull the chariot, to me, it's moving forward in the future. Okay. In the, the, the reverse, the chariot would be moving backwards. You're taking two steps back versus going forward. Um, so I just wanted to say that too, because I feel like it's the chariot is also looked at as action you're taking action but also they described how he doesn't have rings on the two sphinxes um or in some cards it's the horse and um and that shows trust it shows that he doesn't need to tell where to go they like his will is telling him for them like where to go if that makes sense i hope that makes sense <laughs> um there was also a piece in here about um like, I feel like I put, I put to lose virginity. Like, there's a piece in here that made me think about that. Um, he's not the victim of his emotions and his sexuality contributes to, sat to a satisfying life. The glowing square on his chest, a symbol of vibrant nature, links him to the sensual world of the Empress. But the eight-pointed star on his crown shows um, his mental energy directing his passion. Blah, 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 blah. Um... Oh, the lingam, the lingam and yoni, which is this thing, that little red right there, um, indicates his mature sexuality, which is under his control. So in the lovers, you're still making that choice, right? And and or you're making bad choices in, in reverse. You're 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 just all over the place. <laughs> you're still discovering who you are. And in the chariot, it's kind of like you have a handle of yourself sexually and you, and so I took, I wrote that to, to mean like the chariot lost his virginity. Like the lovers, you're still trying to decide what to do. And the chariot is like, nope, I'm good. I'm experienced. <laughs> um, okay. So then a negative sense. So a reversal sense for the chariot, we must realize we cannot control everything so the chariot the chariot is uh, is about control having to be motivated to do things but you have a lot of control over various aspects of your life right but there's a reversal for that having a little bit too much control or being too much of a control freak can be one of those things um where sometimes you have to let things fall apart sometimes you have to let situations break and and people disappear or people disconnect from you sometimes you have to allow that to happen because that's where growth happens or that's where experiences are or are, are that where experiences come full circle you know you can't always have control over everything or anyone or everybody in your life sometimes we have to allow things to just be especially if they are not being in our favor <laughs> so that was a big one that was a big one for me to to highlight because i felt that was so strong um uh, willpower alone cannot always sustain us like oedipus we must sometimes learn to give way to the gods so sometimes you got to give it to god you know that you know that famous quote that people always say like give it to god let, let god take control give it to the universe let the universe handle it that's kind of like a chariot in reverse whereas the you know uprights like I can do anything and I have control and I can I can do whatever I need to do to get shit done but in reverse it's also it's it's also honoring you accepting that I can't control everything and I need help 
So I love that. I really like that. I thought that was powerful because um, I think that's equally as important. So you guys, that is basically the gist of the discussion for um, for chapter four. Um, I'm really, 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 really into this and I'm really excited to keep going. <laughs> um, so then next week um, will be week three. We're going to be continuing on with part one. So we're still doing the major arcana. So we're going to be reading chapter five. And I believe chapter five is from page 70. Let me look in the, let's just look in the table of contents. <laughs> um, page 70 to 109. So it's about maybe like 40 pages, 40 ish, 30 something pages. Um, so it's a chunky chapter, but we're getting through the book. So that, that's the thing. And I know that this week is um, Christmas week. <laughs> so I'm hoping that um, I know people are you're, obviously we're going to have plans because it's Christmas week, but I'm also hoping because it's Christmas week that a lot of us aren't working. So we have more time to read. Um, no pressure. If you can't finish the chapter, there's no pressure. Absolutely not. But if you do finish it, great. It looks like we're going to be covering the wheel of fortune, number 10, all the way up through, oh no, wait, not number 10. We ended on eight. The, oh, we're going to start with the hermit. So we're going to do the hermit. Yeah, the hermit all the way up through temperance, which is number 14. So good cards. We're going to we're going to get uh, through another big chunk of major arcana cards. So I will post um on my Instagram and in the Facebook group, I will be posting the prompt for week three so don't worry about it i will post it and i'll post that on monday but for now let's just discuss chapter three um i think it's chapter three we just read no chapter four sorry so let's just discuss these cards the um the empress the emperor the lovers the hierophant and the chariot we'll talk about these cards and then if you guys have comments comments concerns questions anything you want to say leave it below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you and hear your input. Um, I can't wait. I'm probably going to start diving into the chapter today because I do have plans tomorrow. Um, so I won't get any reading time done tomorrow except for maybe in, in the early morning. But I think I'll dive into the chapter today because I try to read at least like five to six pages a day because of that. That helps me get through it really fast. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying the 78 degrees of wisdom and I will see you guys back here in another week to discuss the next chapter. Bye loves.